Hi everybody and welcome to another video brought to you by plcgurus.net. So hopefully you've been following along in our Control Logics um, PID Essentials video series here. And if you haven't, I do highly recommend that you head back to part one and watch these videos in sequential order. It's important because each one builds on the previous and you're going to be a little bit lost if you just jump in right here. Okay, so last video, what we did is we started building some of the ladder logic that is going to require to support the PIDE instruction in our loop control routine. And we did some programming over in the loop control auxiliary routine. So today what I want to do is, is get the logic required in the main routine, and then we'll be able to f test the functions of our simulation panel here. And I think that'll be enough, and then we can focus mainly on the PIDE instruction itself. Okay, so let's head on over to the main routine, and I'm just going to add some XIC instructions here, and output, and again, just follow along, we'll explain things as we go. And now what I want to do is create a new tag, and this is going to function as our stop push button. Okay, and I think the tag name alone is self-explanatory. We're going to create that as a alias type, and it's an alias for, if you recall from our I.O. list in the previous videos, we actually wired this guy into uh, local 2 data 0. Okay, and if you're not sure on the I.O. wiring, head back to the previous videos and, and give it a look. Okay, so we'll create that. And let's go ahead and now create our start push button. And again, it's going to be an alias four, and we landed that guy over on data point one. And we have already created the process running light, so it should show up here, and we're not actually using that one, we're actually going to be using this guy, okay? Because that's actually alias to the physical IO point. And again, we are purely simulating, however, if you're using real hardware, you can go ahead and follow along as well. So like I said, we're, we're, we're trying to provide maximum flexibility here. So we can simulate the entire thing on a PC, or if you have the physical hardware, we can go ahead and do it that way as well. And we're gonna cater to both, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is just drag this over to seal in our start push button, and that's gonna provide our start stop circuit for the process running, okay? So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add something here. So let me get some uh, compare logic on here. So I'm gonna go a less than, greater than, and then I'm gonna explain what I'm doing. And then we want the clear instruction. Okay, first let's create a new tag. We're gonna call this tag temp dist. So this tag is gonna function as our simulated temperature disturbance. So recall, from the previous videos that the temperature disturbance is a way to hit our process with a step change. So in the case of our temperature control process, that's gonna come in the way of either a positive or negative uh, temperature disturbance, which is going to be uh, scaled to plus or minus 10 degrees C, okay? So we, can, we have the ability now through our slider or if you have a potentiometer for your physical hardware, through that potentiometer, you're gonna be able to inject a disturbance into the process of plus or minus 10 degrees C, okay? And so of course, this is an analog value, so we wanna make sure that we select real. And this is going to be an alias for the analog input that we landed on channel zero of input module three, the analog input module. So you're gonna to have to scroll all the way down to the bottom, pick channel zero and click create, okay? Now, for the source B here on the left side, I wanna make this one, and I'm just gonna drag this over, and I'm gonna make this negative one. And then I'm gonna drag temp dist over to the clear instruction one more time. So I wanna just talk about what we've done here, okay? So what have we really done? We've created essentially a software filter. And the only reason I'm doing this is because you, you'll see when we use the slider, or even if you're using a you know a 5K or 10K potentiometer, it, it can be a little bit jumpy, all right? So what we're gonna say is, okay, if the temperature disturbance is between one and negative one, let's just go ahead and make it zero, all right? It just, it's a convenience thing for us to zero out the disturbance because we're gonna be zeroing out the disturbance and then we wanna be you know adding a disturbance. So this is the a nice easy way to create a, 
a little filter in order to get rid of the ripple or the bouncing or or the headache of trying to find zero all the time. As long as we get it close, we're going to be good. All right, so I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and save what we've got here. And let's go ahead and download it into the emulated controller here. So notice I have my path defined, so I can just go ahead and download it in. And we're going to change that to run mode and we should be okay. So to fire up the uh, simulation panel here, what we want to do here is just click on the little play button. You see beside the stop button, see how it stops? So I'm going to click that and notice right away that my HMI and the sim panel that you've downloaded should be linking up to your emulated processor now and the program that's running in it. Okay, so this is good. So let's just kind of see what we got here. So you can see my simulated temperature disturbance is currently at negative 10 degrees C. And as I drag that up, you can see see what I mean with the little bit jumpy. So I want to be able to get that at zero. So I use a little asterisk for the degree symbol. So just know that this is zero degree C. And I can go ahead and go to, you know, plus 10. And I can go all the way back down to negative 10. Okay, so that seems to be working just fine, right? And you can see the analog input channel is updating as we do that. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and hit the start push button. So notice the start push button did work and our process is now running, but it's not really doing anything yet because we haven't programmed any PID yet. Um, however, we're just testing the function of the SIM panel and it does seem to be working. The selector switch, just click on the mode that you want and it's working. So you know what? I know this is a short video. Actually, let's just check one more thing. The CV hand. So this is our way to enter a, v, a CV hand value. So again, if, if you've been following along, you'll have a good idea of what CV hand is. Um, but again, because uh, we're stopped, it didn't take it. So let's just start it. And we should be able to enter a value in there now. And it should show us something. There you go. So we have to be running in hand mode for CV value to take. And that's because of what we're doing in here. Okay. So it looks like our simulation panel is ready. I think all of our supporting logic is good to go. So the next video, we'll be able to jump right into our function block diagram and the loop control routine and then focus exclusively on the PID control or the PIDE instruction that is. So I hope you found this video informative. Please uh, do like and subscribe to our channel and make sure you head on over to https colon backslash backslash plcgurus.net and become a member of one of the internet's fastest growing community of professional engineers, technicians, and technologists. So I look forward to the next video. Thank you for watching.